The technology upgrades provided by the Darien Foundation has been a game changer for us. It's allowed us to improve our training. It has helped us hone our skills. Thanks to our partnership with the Darien Foundation, who's provided all this technology and several grants throughout the years, we're able to continue to be prepared to respond whenever you need it. I'd like to thank the Darien Foundation for their continued support. Uh, they've been a wonderful partner and they've taken this vision that we've had for this property and make it a reality. Thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have this amazing new van and we are so excited about it and what it'll do for the community. This is going to be a real improvement in the services we provide. The Darien Foundation is important to the community in the scope that they reach out to answer needs. It's important for people to be proud of where they live and to understand that if they want a better society, that they need to fund places like the Darien Foundation and the places like the Mather Homestead because they're so rich in cultural achievements that it makes it a better place to live. Celebrating and supporting Darien athletes. That is a simple mission of the Darien Athletic Foundation. Broadcasting live from the field, DAF Media covers 125 games a year. All Darien teams, our youth, in our town, on our field. Fields like the Center Oval and Upper Oval Turfs, the JV Softball Field, and Stadium East, the longest turf in New England all made possible by the Darien Athletic Foundation and its generous founders and donors. The Darien Athletic Foundation is not just committed to building our town's athletic infrastructure, it's improving the civic infrastructure for everyone to enjoy. The multimedia scoreboard, the snack bar pavilion, and the stadium lights, a $750,000 investment that makes Darien High School just the second school in Connecticut with LED lights. The Darien Athletic Foundation Board is made up of local parents, parents who know just how quickly it goes by. Its archives of more than 60,000 photos capture those precious moments of our young athletes as they strive to be their very best. The Darien Athletic Foundation has raised almost nine and a half million dollars for our town and its kids, and it's not stopping there. As it continues to build a legacy for our youth, as bright as their future, both on and off the field. This is David Genovese, founder of Corbin Cares. Corbin Cares Phase 2, in partnership with the Darien Foundation, was launched to support the people who support Darien. Corbin Cares partnered with the Darien Foundation to thank essential workers, teachers, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, town employees, and postal workers who stepped up during the pandemic. Family meals for four were provided by Four Forks, Bodega, Michael Joseph's, 1020 Post, and Parlor Pizza and Wine. Post 53 was treated to a tacos and waffles night with Bodega and the Waffle Cabin. Thanks to countless donors, 910 family dinners for four and 110 posties were served. And the Corbin Cares office was flooded with notes, emails, and letters of gratitude. Thanks to the essential workers and generous donors, you are all that make this community great. We are DAF Media, Darianne's hometown source for sports, arts, and entertainment, established in 2017. We are Community, a volunteer-based organization that gives nearly 50 Darien High School students hands-on experience in video production. We are Cutting Edge, a STEM initiative students use K-12 
cameras, computers, sound equipment, and innovative software. We are live, streaming 120 events per year on our YouTube channel. We are on the stage. We are at the big games. We are on the field. We are in the gym. We are on the move. Live streaming not only in Darien, but throughout southwestern Connecticut and the tri-state area. We are making a difference. We are DAF Media. This broadcast is produced by DAF Media, a joint venture between the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. The production is staffed by student and adult volunteers from the town of Darien and southwestern Connecticut.
welcome you inside the Darien High School South Gym for this varsity wrestling match between the Darien Blue Wave and the Stamford Black Knights. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. Braden Shank joined alongside me, the uh, Darien High School varsity res re assistant wrestling coach, Joe Testa. And Joe, we should have a good one on hand today. Yeah, we should have a good match here. Stanford's got a strong program, and we finally built our numbers here in Darien. So we're looking forward to a good match. Hopefully come home with the win. And we're jumping right into the first match we have in the 106-pound uh, class for Stanford. It will be Samantha Yap, and for Darien, it will be Arby Galiki. Yes, Arbery is brand new, but uh, he is the cousin of one of our former wrestlers, Granite Hody. Samantha Yap is from Stanford, and she is a very good wrestler. One of the top 10 106s here in Connecticut. Very strong, as you can see here. She's locked up that half Nelson. She just needs to keep his shoulders down for about two seconds. What Arbery's trying to do is trying to get back to his belly. There it is. That's what happens when you get a nice deep half. And they will reset here. And they're actually going to call it a match there. That's that, was a, that was a pin. Like I said, Samantha is one of the top 10 106-pounders here in Connecticut. And uh, she would definitely be ranked nationally if there were national tournaments happening right now. So Samantha Yap, the junior for the Black Knights, picks up the, uh, the pin for Stanford. And this will move us into our second one in the 113-pound class. It will be Frank Bear for Stanford, and Nathaniel Smith for the Blue Wave. And so Nate was uh, one of my youth wrestlers. I've been coaching Nate since he was in fourth grade. He's, uh, he's another talented wrestler. He's strong, usually puts on a good show, likes his throws, likes his rolls. But uh, we'll see how he takes it today. And Joe, we were talking before the match. You coached a lot of these guys on the Sterian team in the, uh, the earlier ages, the youth program. How do you think that kind of builds up into the high school level? Oh, it's, you know, the, the youth program helps with, with so much. Um, I think if I'm counting off the top of my head correctly, I've brought five of my youth wrestlers in, and they've all been wrestling for more than four or five years. So it's great to step onto the mat, picking up the pin there. Excellent job, Nate. But uh, it, it's great to start the year off as a freshman having four or five years of competitive experience under your belt. I mean, it, it, really, it really does make a difference in this sport, you know. This is a Blue Wave team that's off to a good start this year at four and six, something that they haven't gotten off this good of a start since 2015-2016 uh, season. It, uh, it has been quite a while, but you know, our numbers have been down lately. Um, again, that's a good part of having the youth program is that it, it slowly feeds into us and it builds our team bigger and bigger. Um, it's going to be a forfeit here at the 120. Unfortunately, we do, do not have anyone in that weight class. So I can tell that the 120 pound will take the uh, points for Stanford. That's uh, the 126 pound weight class coming up, and uh, we've got one of our brothers here, Axel LaRouze, is going to step out. He's in the good young wrestler. Um, he's tough, he's aggressive, just kind of needs to put it together, get that experience on the mat, and he's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with here in the FCX. And he will be going up against Finnegan and Finian Boger for the Stanford Black Knights. You see here, he's fighting for inside control on those ties. You want to be inside your opponent's arms. That's going to give you the advantage. Um, working to, to kind of move his head, clear his arms, and, and find his shot around the legs. Um, Axel has a really nice, really fast shot. He's doing a good job. Needs to stay a little lower in his stance, but there it is. That's a, that's a good shot. Got to get his hand on that leg. Who's a freshman for the Blue Wave? One of the few freshmen that wasn't one of my youth wrestlers. A nice defense there on the sprawl, spinning behind to score his takedown. What he wants to do now is he wants to try and get those wrists under control and roll them into, the, into his hips, just like he's doing. Hopefully break his opponent down flat. This way we can go to work with a half Nelson or some sort of pinning combination. Good one so far. And he's 126. Oh, let him slide out. A good reversal there. Finian. Axel's going to want to try and stand up here. We're looking for an escape. Reversal would be ideal, but an escape would score him a point. So that would kind of keep him in the lead here. Excellent reversal. Finding the ankle, bringing it in, forcing his opponent onto his back. And the whistle stopping. What did we get here? 
blood time. Looks like we got a bloody nose. All too common in wrestling. So how this works is they, they stop the clock um, and they give the wrestler two and a half minutes to stop the bleeding, plug the nose up, clean the mat off. If for some reason they can't stop the bleeding in that time, then he would have to forfeit the match. So he has two and a half minutes here just to get all the bleeding under control. Joe, you mentioned this is something that you know happens a little, little too often in the sport. Of course, you've been around this sport for a while, and you just want to tell the viewers at home just you know the physical, uh, you know the physical tolls it takes on the body. You know, in a sport like wrestling. Oh man, yeah, there, there is, there is no sport like wrestling. You know, it's, it's tough on, on both your body. It's tough on your mind. It's the longest season in high school sports, and we wrestle, you know, upwards of 27, 30 matches, and just the toll that that takes being picked up and dropped and held down and fighting people off is it's it's immense you know it, it really is so you, you know you wouldn't be surprised seeing kids come off the mat and and immediately get their arm iced up or or get a knee iced up bloody noses are very common we have special equipment so kids can wrestle with a broken nose if that's the way it is i mean like i said there's there's no sport like wrestling Still on the uh, pause for the blood time in this 126 weight class. And it looks like Ogre yeah. will take and the mat. Now you see he'll be, he'll be wrestling with one less nostril with that nose plug in. And some final preparations before they get back underway. This is, a, this is a nice close mat. So Finian is, is uh, down. Axel's winning four to two. Each takedown is going to score two points, and each of the reversals that they get where you switch positions from bottom to top, you score two points. So Finian reversed Axel after his first takedown, and then Axel returned the favor and got that reversal back on him. So that should bring him up four to two. It looks like they're still checking out the bloody nose. Only in our fourth match of the afternoon. <laughs> of course, in the uh, beautiful Darien High School South Gym, home of Darien Wrestling. Of course, the new mats that they got last year. Oh, man, these mats are awesome. So much nicer. The mats we had before were from when I was in high school. I wrestled on them their first year we got them. So, you know, they were, they were getting close to 15, 16 years old, and these are... These are significantly lighter and easier to move around, and they just have a lot more padding. Makes it a little bit safer for the kids, which, you know, is really the goal. As tough as the sport is, and as we can see with the bloody noses, we do try to make it as, as safe as we can. Of course, we mentioned last season they got the new mats. Unfortunately, couldn't pull them out until this year. Last year, their season canceled due to COVID. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of, I believe, only two winter sports to be canceled from the CIAC's uh, yeah. schedule. This is a, it, it, you know, when, when, when COVID hit, this was a, this was a tough sport to keep going. I mean, it's, it's very hard to be socially distanced during wrestling. So Boger and Aruz will restart. So we're going to get a caution there. When you line up on top, you need to have a one hand on your opponent's elbow and one on the belly button. And if, you, if you're not on the elbow or the belly button, you get a caution there. So Ruth starting on top. Nice quick move. Good escape. So he just scored one point. That should bring the match to four to three. Again, Axel is winning by one point, but he doesn't want to get complacent. He wants to kind of push the tempo here. And nice sprawl. Excellent job controlling his head, looking to spin behind. Nice catch with that underhook. Here comes the bulldog. So he's trying to punch that arm over. And that's the end of the period. Four to three. And we're back in blood time. Joe, while we are back in the blood time, do you want to explain to the viewers how the period system work in uh, wrestling? Sure. So at the high school level, we wrestle three two-minute periods. So it would be a six-minute match. Um, the only reason that match would end early is, um, like I said, if blood time runs out, if you get a pin like we saw with Nate and with Samantha Yap, um, or we have a, a way of winning called a tech fall, which is basically a mercy rule. If you go up by 15 points, the match stops right then and there. Um, but other than that, you wrestle six minutes, and if you're tied, you go to a one minute of overtime, and um, 
it's probably the most tiring six minutes any high schooler is ever going to spend in his life. You know, uh, it is, it's not easy to go six minutes against somebody else trying to, trying to hold them down. And once again, if you're just joining us, Braden Shank and Joe Testa with you. So glad you could be with us. Ah, love it. Every time I get invited to these, these are always awesome. You guys put on a great production, and uh, it's always enjoyable. Of course, the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation, bringing you this live stream of varsity wrestling. And once again, going to clean the mat up in this 126 weight class between two freshmen and Finney and Boger and Axel Aruz. Yeah, and like I said, Axel is, uh, he's putting it together. He's, he's really night and day from when he started the season. He, he's aggressive now, he's found some confidence. You can see he's defending these shots very well with his sprawl, getting his hips down, controlling his opponent's head, and then spinning to score his points. Um, so here between periods, um, there's choice. It alternates between teams, so this was Darianne's choice. You can choose top, bottom, neutral, or you can defer your choice to the third period, which is what Darianne just did. We deferred our choice to the third period. So the second period getting underway. Nice stop with that quick sit out this time. Ah, locking hands. That's going to cost Axel a point there. That's going to tie it up. So when you're on top in wrestling um, and you're wrestling on the ground, you can't lock your hands around your opponent because it gives you an unfair advantage. So anytime you lock your hands, the ref's going to stop the match and he's going to award one point to your opponent. So Axel went from winning four to three to tied up four to four. The match we have on hand. You can see he's got great wrist control there. He's got to try to fight to keep that wrist control. Maybe got away with a clasp there at the end. What he wants to do here is you see he's reaching outside to grab his opponent's wrist. Where you want to be is you want to be under his armpits, grabbing the wrist from the inside there. Gives you much more control. He's keeping his hips down. He's got to get off his knees though. You have no power from your knees. You want to be on your toes when you drive. Again, this is the second period in this 126 pound weight class. He's really got to get back behind. He does not want to be in front here, Axel. Ah, and that's why, giving up two points. So now Finian's going to take the lead on a 6 4. Nice strong reversal. Axel's got to start moving here. He's got to look to score. Found the leg, which is a great find. Nice job. And that'll tie it up once again at six. Seems like two evenly matched wrestlers in this one. This is a, this is a great match. Uh, this is great for Axel. I'm sure it's great for Finian as well because it's a great learning experience, you know. It, it's, it's hard to learn wrestling when you're going out against seniors and they're pinning you in, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. But when you can wrestle someone your own skill level for a full six minutes, it, it really helps you put it together and understand how the sport works. And that's going to be the end of the second period. Axel's going to have choice, and he's going to take bottom in this third period because, like I said, an escape is going to score you one point, and they're tied right now. So if Axel can get his escape, he can go up for the last two minutes. And Drew's tr strategically thinking, is that an easier move to perform the uh, escape on the bottom uh, position? Much easier. Um, the main escape is just a stand-up. As we see, he did go for it. His opponent grabbed his ankle. It's much easier to escape than to try to hold somebody down. Um, so if at all possible for strategy, you want to defer your choice to the third period and then usually take bottom to score quickly. Ah, there he goes. He gets a point there. Now his opponent locked hands on him. So if I'm keeping the score right in my head, Axel should be winning 7-6 to six right now and they're gonna let him up. That's a strategy as well. Stanford knows that he's been reversed three times so far this match. So they're not gonna risk giving up those two points. They'd rather just give him that one. So Axel's up two and he's gotta defend this shot. He's gotta spin and get his points. 
You know, in, in wrestling, it's one of those things you can't just sit on your lead because the momentum can shift. Nice, quick shot. You've got to find the half, cap the head. Great job there. Nice score right at the out of bounds marker. Two points picked up for Rose. So that's going to put Axel up 10 to 6. He's, he's looking good here. Um, he's just got to hold him down for probably about a minute or so, which is much easier said than done. Rose starting on top. He's losing position there. Just let it go and give up the one. Ogre with the one point pickup for the Black Knights. This is good. Now when he reaches, that's when you want to shoot. You don't want his hands down low where they could defend your legs. Ooh, got a little sloppy there, Axel. So he should be up by one point here. He's really got to work to keep his lead. Like I said, he was up by four, 10 seconds ago. And just like that, the momentum changes. Here, nearing the end of this third period. This one. Oh, he's really got a fight here. I think time is running very short. If he can get his hips out to the front, Axel's going to escape here. All he needs to do is stand up to score one. As you can see, both wrestlers are just exhausted. Oh. Now he's got to really fight this half off. It is very close here. The final way that you can score points in wrestling is what's called a near fall. Wow, he pulls it out by one point. So like I was saying, the final way you can score points is what we call a near fall. And it's when your back is exposed to the map, but you're not quite pinned. And the ref can count that off, and you can score up to three points. And that match will conclude. Axel Ruse will pick up the win for Darianne. A one point win. A yeah, very close win, but again, those are the type of matches you want from new wrestlers. Ones that go the full six minutes. You have a little bit of adversity you need to overcome. Um, yeah, that, that's really going to do a lot to boost his confidence. And you got to give credit to uh, Finney and Boger on that one. Two blood timeouts, still fought in it what all the battle. way to the end. And again, you know, like I said, there, there's no, no sport like wrestling. You know, you get that bloody nose, get right back out there, and you keep wrestling. So in the 132-pound class to keep it moving, Jasmine Whitfield of Stanford will take the forfeit win. There we go. That's good for them. And this will now move us to our 136-pound class, Owen Tyler and Terrence Doyle. Yeah, Owen's an exciting young wrestler. He's a sophomore. His dad was a wrestler all through his life, so he has a really good skill base behind him. Um, he's been getting better and better with every match. You know, he likes to wrestle tough. For him, this isn't really where he wants to be tied up like this. This is, this is tight. He'd rather be away from his opponent and shooting from distance. So he'll try to back up and try to keep his distance. And on the other side, Doyle, a uh, freshman, the head coach, Jamie Camacho and the Stanford Black Knights. In position of head control, he needs to sprawl hard here, like we were seeing from Axel. Controlling the head and reattacks. Fantastic job by Owen. Picks up two points. Really. Look in the cradle. He's switching from move to move here, which is. Shows a great increase in his ability. Going from move to move. When one doesn't work, he just switches gears and goes right to his next move. Working to get his half Nelson in here and control the wrist on that right side. And that's going to give him the control over his opponent. Doyle gets up, brought right back down. Great, right. Matt, return there. Keeping that wrist control. Now, if he can run around his head and take a big step, he might get some back points here. Nice half Nelson. That's in very deep there. What he wants to do is try to elevate his elbow and drive there. That's great position. He needs to settle his hips and get his head looking up at the lights. Got to keep that. Oh, he was looking to end it. 
So here you see the ref holding out a three on his fingers. That's just a signal that there are three back points and he just awarded them to Owen. Right at the end of the period. Nice first period. And that will take us to the end of the first period. And we can see again, it was Darien's choice for this match. And again, we deferred our choice. Right, it's, a, it's a strategy move we're trying to work. They choose neutral, hoping that their wrestler can get a big takedown and instead take control of this match. He's got to keep his head up there, Owen. He doesn't want his opponent to control his head. We're now in the second period. It's He's fighting in. He's got to get his hands off his head before he takes a shot like that. And that just comes with mat time. You know, it's one of the, one of the things of a young wrestler is they're, they're going to shoot. But we love when they're aggressive like that. We just like to see him set it up just a little better. It's a little bit of hand fighting. Tyler makes the move on Doyle. So... That is one of the penalties in wrestling that is called stalling. And what that means is every wrestler from every position needs to be looking to improve their position. So when you're neutral on your feet like this, you need to be looking to take your opponent down. And the ref decided that the Stanford wrestler was not looking to take his opponent down, and he gave him a warning for stalling. If he continues to stall, he'll start getting penalty points. The first penalty we've seen this afternoon. Yeah, that, that's, you know, sometimes they, they come fast and sometimes they wrestle clean. He's got to get him off his head here. Owen's in trouble if he continues to let him control the head. Oh, you don't want to be there. Let's it go. Again, another sign of a, a wrestler gaining confidence and, and gaining some technique and skill and knowing when he's in bad position and just deciding, you know what, I'm not going to stick with this. I'm going to let it go and we'll start from, from neutral. If Owen can get his hips in, he may be able to, all oh, right, at the end of the second. And the two minutes expires. And here we go into the final period. It is Darianne's choice, and I believe they're going to take that. Uh, going to take bottom again. Yep. Bottom position. Like I said, we're looking for those quick points. We're looking to score as fast as we can, and it's always easier to score from bottom than it is from neutral or top. Have another caution. Another caution. Doyle will be on top. Tyler on the bottom. Good stand up, nice strong stand up. Gets right to his feet. If he turns his hips in here, he can score a reversal. Let go of the Now here, he's in a little bit of trouble. There we go, back to his belly. Oh, that's a deep half Nelson. That's trouble. When you sink it deep, that is hard to get out of. What a come from behind win there. Nice job with that half Nelson. Tyler a little slow to get up. It's never fun to have someone hanging onto your head like that. But Terrence Doyle will pick up the win for Stanford. And as you mentioned, a great come from behind win for Doyle. Really, it can, it can happen like that in wrestling. You know, you blink and all of a sudden the momentum is shifted and now you're on the losing end. Especially something like that, where the first two periods, Tyler really dominated. Yeah. And then it just took one pin from Doyle you to know, flip the, uh, the momentum of the that's match. That's it. One good move, sink it in deep, and, and you can really change that match around. They're now underway in our 145-pound class between Savion Razor for Darianne and Kevin Oliva. Oliva. Savion, he's a, a junior this year. He's been wrestling with us for three years. He's a, he's a good re aggressive wrestler. Um, needs to clean his technique up a little bit, but he's fast, he's aggressive, and he's strong. Nice shot there. Way to switch right to his next move. He's using the strength. Sinking that half Nelson in right away. What a roll, wow. 
Both wrestlers picking up two points for their sides. Oh! Now see there is a classic mistake where you reach to the head and try to pull back. If your opponent, like Savion just did, gets their hips down, you're not gonna be turning them that way and now he's on his back. Right. So what Savion wants to try to do here is he wants to try to pop his head out of that lock and instead get his arm in a, in a reverse half around his opponent and really just squeeze. He wants to get his head up, he wants to get his hips down. There we go. He's gotta get his hips down and he's gotta try to fight his head out of there. There we go. He's gotta keep that arm. Now he's in much better position. These are on top currently. That was a quick flurry of moves. So he just scored his three back points. I believe if I'm keeping track correctly, he should be up five to two. Let me jump over the hips. Again, as we can see, we're trying to control that wrist, try and keep it pinned to our opponent's hip. It's one less thing they have to resist. And here Stanford's going to defer, which forces the choice on the Savion. He's going to take bottom. Once again, Darianne starting on the bottom. A strategic move from head coach Greg Lewis. Oliva starting on top. Good sit out here. Wants to peel the hand off the waist, just like that. Wants to try to face his opponent, and he scores his one. Nice counter there, though. Oh, got his hips out. If he can stand up, he's out. There's no weight on him right now. What you don't want to do in wrestling is you don't want to sit still. You want to always be moving. Anytime you stop moving, you give your opponent a chance to counter. Nice strong escape there from Savion. Razor will ex escape, picking up the point. They're extending it to 6-2. I believe so, yes. Now he's got to try to get his wrists out of here. We don't want to let our opponent control our wrists like that. There we go. Pushing the head to get him thinking about something else. Nice shot. He needs to finish with the half Nelson around his opponent's head. Nice catch right on his back. Now he's got to squeeze. If he gets his head up and his hips down, this is a pin. Nice job. And that will be the pin. Avion Razor taking it for the blue wave and picking up the six points. It's a great match by both sides. Only went two periods, but Derek it's a got great the job strong done. match. Yeah, you know, the faster you can get that pin, the better. You, like I said, there's nothing more tiring than six minutes of wrestling. So if you can win it early, you want to get it done early. Now takes us to our 152 pound weight class for Darianne, Gavin Pearsall, and for Stanford, Max Bildadi. Max Had to find that one on the roster. <laughs> so Gavin, uh, he's, a, he's a good, strong wrestler, multi-sport athlete, just got caught there. He's got to fight off. What a great hold here by Max. Really strong hold. He's got his hand all the way around to his opponent's chest. Gavin's got to try to fight his head free and punch that arm out. Just got caught when he wasn't looking. Daddy with the upper hand, it seems like, right now. That is a, a fantastic half Nelson. That is about as deep as you can get a half in. Nice bridge here from Gavin, and it's a great fight. This is, like you said, 152 pounds, and it's, it's hard to get that weight off you when you're on your back. See, right there on your screen was head coach Greg Lewis. Nice. nice fight from Gavin here. Like I was saying, a good multi-sport athlete, plays football in the fall. He did a lot of youth wrestling with the Mad Bulls program in Norwalk. 
And he came in with a nice experience level. You know, Max is a junior, I believe. Uh, senior. A senior this year. He's, you know, it's going to be tough to wrestle a senior. A couple extra years experience, a little bit more muscle than he's probably used to seeing. He's a very technical wrestler, Max. Nice half Nelson. Good counter. Daddy trying to keep Pearsall on the mat. He's got to stomp his foot down. He's got to get him off his ankle here. And the buzzer will sound, taking us to the end of the first period. We're going to defer our choice here. And Stanford having the choice. They're going to send Baldotti on the bottom position, looking to pick up some points. To, like I said, you know, most coaches, it's generally accepted. If you have choice, you're usually going to go bottom. Now, Gavin's usually pretty good at top. He's a, he's a punishing wrestler from top. He really is. See there, got good waist control, drop down to his opponent's leg. And they will restart. Again, right to that waist and that ankle. It counters the stand up right away because it's awfully hard to stand up on just one leg. Now what he wants to do is keep driving forward, keeping his pressure down, and eventually break his opponent flat here. What makes Gavin such a punishing wrestler is that hand around the waist, he's squeezing the whole time. And he's making you work very, very hard to score any points or to move anywhere. You know, if he can get a good, good ride here on top for two minutes, he can definitely tire his opponent out, and that's when we'll look to score and capitalize in the third period. Pearsall, just a sophomore. I mean, last year's freshman year, there was no season. So there was. First year, really, on varsity and getting varsity experience. Yeah, you know, you can have all the, the youth experience in the world, but um, there's really nothing like varsity wrestling, uh, especially when you're wrestling a senior. Max did very well in the FCAC tournament two years ago as a sophomore. He's, he really is a very good, very technical wrestler. So this is, this is really a great test for Gavin. You know, we're, we're, we're hoping to see him get a win out of this. Really take it to the next level. Good control, keeping that pressure, that shoulder in his opponent's back. Driving forward and down. He's done a great job here, riding his opponent out, not giving up any points from this position. Your soul holding that upper hand currently. That waist and ankle are Great punish moves. Now he's trying to keep him in here because he really wants that clock to run down. And the more times they reset, the easier it is off the whistle for Max to try and get that escape. Nice mat return, right to the wrist there. Nice job by Gavin. That's it, full two minutes riding out on top. That's a great job. Two periods down, one still to go. And you can see when it cuts to their faces, it is a very tiring sport to try and, uh, to try and make it six minutes in. It's also something, you look at it on paper, six minutes wrestling, and it doesn't look that hard. And then uh. once you actually get in there, really see the, uh, the toll it takes on you and the really just the stamina it takes to go a full six minutes. Yeah, you know, I mean, six minutes is, is nothing when you look at it, but it's a whole different story when someone's there on top of you. Great job there by Gavin. I believe he's down by three points now, five to two. Nice hammer lock there, needs the head. See again, after two minutes of Gavin riding on top, he's really slowed Max down. He's able to get a lot more control over his opponent now. Ah. So there Gavin got the stalling call. The ref's just saying that, you know, you're not looking to, to pin your opponent. You're not looking to approve your position from top, which the only way to improve from top is to get a pin. And the caution to Pearsall. The elbow, again, 
having a hard time finding the elbow today. Great step through. Now he's got to try and chop one of these arms down so that he can he can really drive on him. He wants to take away all these points. He's got to score three points quickly. So what that means is he's got to put his opponent on his back. You know. It's great that he's getting him down. It's great that he's controlling him, but that takedown and back points early for Max is really what's gonna hang over Gavin here. And once again, this is the third and final period. So it's really go time for Gavin Pearsall to try to get back in this match. And we see stalling for the bottom for Stanford for Max. You know, and a clasp. That is not what we wanted there. Pearsall brings him to the mat. Fortunately, he clasped his hands there, which is gonna give Max one point. So now Gavin's down by four. He's, he's really gotta make something happen now. At this point, he's looking for a pin. It's gonna be one of the only ways he can win this match. It's not really that far-fetched. We saw it in a couple matches ago with uh, Terrence Doyle. It just turns around sometimes. Sometimes you get the move you've been looking for, and. It just goes your way. So right from here is where Gavin can really attack, but he's got to keep his opponent flat on the ground. Max, again, very strong wrestler, very experienced wrestler. He knows how to move and where to move. Well, Dottie's in the situation where he can give up a point or two, but as long as he doesn't get pinned, he's fine for the next minute or so. It's yeah. actually and there it is. right there. Yep, so that's going to be it. That was a great, strong match from our from from Gavin, you know, against the senior. And it will be Eldadi for Stanford who gets the win. And we have a. If my rosters are correct, I think we got a slew of forfeits here coming up from Stanford. And we're now going to the 160 weight class. Williams for Darianne. We'll be going for a uh, forfeit for Stanford. Teddy's another another young wrestler, brand new to the sport this year. He's got a jujitsu background, which gives him a good experience base. Understands momentum, understands how to control somebody. Um, we're really excited about his future here in the sport. Would have loved to see him wrestle today. And now in the 170 weight class, the uh, one of the senior captains, Mason Headley. Uh, another of our multi-sport athletes. He was a great football player. Played on the defensive line and special teams, and you know he he's he's a very strong wrestler. And now moving down the list to 182, Ross for Gary Ann. And Dash wrestled for uh, GPS Wrestling in his youth, which is out of New York. Comes from Rye Country Day, where. Um, he had a good career. He's a junior this year, and you know, another of our another of our upper weights are, are really strong for us. You know, those are the kids we have with the most experience. Those are the ones who have been on the mat the longest. Um, you know, he's got a bright future his senior year ahead of him. And Joe, it's really something when you look at this blue wave team in, in the uh, you know past couple of years. They've been the ones that have been forfeiting a lot, and now they've got the numbers this year, and it's really on the other team if they can bring a team and yeah. up someone for Darianne. But this takes us to our 195 weight class where it'll be Drew Passaretti and Damian Puebla. Puebla. So Drew is another of my youth wrestlers. And uh, I've been coaching Drew since he was in fifth grade. He's done a couple tournaments with me. And again, he's another, another strong wrestler, a little different than Nate. He's, he's a little bit more of a, a defensive wrestler, very strong from bottom. Um, whereas Nate likes to push the tempo from neutral. But... You know, looking for good things from him, and I think he's got a really promising career ahead of him as well. He's really turned a corner this last year. That's already a junior for the Blue Wave wrestled his freshman year. Yeah, the great part about this team is not only do we have numbers, but we, we only graduate two seniors at the end of the year. And, you know, they're strong wrestlers, and we're definitely going to miss them, but to bring back 24 other wrestlers who have now had varsity experiences Really going to help keep our team and our momentum going. A little bit of hand fighting. Great shot there by Damian. 
And there's where Drew is strong. Wabla. That movement on bottom, looking for that switch, sitting out hard. He doesn't give his opponent time to get on top of him, which is really a, a great attribute for a wrestler. Looking to score from bottom, looking to attack his opponent from the bottom position. Hips up, right here on the edge, wants to score. Now he's in control, now he wants to keep it in. And he wants to look for some, oh. Just tried to force it a little too much, got a little dangerous. Blah, blah. Pass ready on the mat, that will take us to the end of the first period. That was an exciting first period. A lot of movement there, a lot of attacks. You know, that was great. It does seem as you move up the uh, weight classes, they're a lot more quicker paced and a lot more, you know, heavy hits on them, if you will. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. When you get two good 220s or, or 285 pounders going at each other, man, that is a sight to behold. Great attack off the whistle, right into an offensive move. get up and he got his hips over if he can scoop the head now Passaretti's in control that's tight that headlock keeping that arm and that head and excellent so Passaretti will pick up the pin for the blue wave and the six points for Darian so I believe we have two more forfeits coming up at the heavyweights it's awfully hard to bring 220s and 285s in at the high school level. That's really where we're trying to pull in some of these football players, these offensive, defensive linemen that, you know, really strong and are, are understand how the body moves and how to move other people. So Reese Over back there, another of my youth wrestlers, looking to have a good senior season, one of our senior captains. And one of my freshman football players, Jackson Davenport. I, Played freshman football with me, and he wrestled in my youth program as well. So that's going to be, let me do a quick math. And that is the end of our classes. We're going to tally up the score. So it's uh, looking like Darian's going to come home with the win. Looks like it's going to be 51 to 27. Darian picking up the win. So uh, what happens now is the, the coaches will meet, and we'll look at the weight classes. And yep, we're gonna have some exhibition matches. They're gonna try and match up some of the some of the wrestlers who maybe didn't get time or their match went a little bit quickly and see if we can get a little more time on the mat. Um, this is really where the, the, the kids that don't have the varsity spot just yet really learn the sport of wrestling and get some more experience on the mat. So once again, as you see on your screen, Darian wins the match. The final score 51 to 27, a big win for the Blue Wave. We'll boost their record to five and six on the season. Stanford will uh, drop to 0 and six. We will still have some exhibition matches, but before we get there, I do want to give a shout out to our DAF Media Production crew doing a great job bringing you all the sights and sounds in this one. Connor Fagan, David Popson, Will Foresta, Tim He, our DAF Media Advisor, Damian Andrew, Braden Shank and Joe Testa with you. So glad you could be with us. This is great. Like I said, I really do love it and, and you guys really put on a, a great production here. I mean. It's, this is professional quality from a high school, and that really is, you know, credit to you guys. And I know Coach Lewis is really liking this win because before he came to Darien, he coached the Stanford wrestling program, so he gets a little extra credit for this win. And I believe he's still a teacher over at the Stanford Public School System. Yep. Over at Stanford High. And, uh, Joe, we were talking a little bit before the match, just the, uh, the wrestling scene here in Connecticut, at least not much coverage for it. And, you know, we brought some uh, coverage live stream here, varsity wrestling for these athletes, and we still have some more to go here this afternoon. Yeah, it, it, it really is great what you guys are doing for the sport, getting the, the word out there, getting the video out there, letting people see what it's all about. Um, like you said, there really is very limited coverage at the high school level, and to have a production like this and show off the match is, is really something else. I mean, you guys really are ahead of the curve. Hopefully we see it more from other schools. Of course, the scene, I mean, it seems like down in Fairfield County, you know, the numbers might be going down, but other places upstate, the numbers are They're really going skyrocketing. Up. you got All schools right. like Xavier, who has been a powerhouse for a while. Danbury, yeah. a powerhouse at the FCAC, and 
you know, there's programs out there that just I continue think, uh, to thrive. This, this is the first year in my 20 years of wrestling that Danbury is not ranked number one in the state. Xavier dropped him. And it looks like we are going to have a great first exhibition match. This is the match I was hoping to see today. We'll see our varsity 113, Nate Smith, versus their varsity 106, Samantha Yap. And uh, this should really be a, a, a great match and a good test for both of these wrestlers. Of course, both of these wrestlers already wrestled today, and they're going to get a second shot. And this one. This is good. This is a great part about exhibition matches where two varsity wrestlers who really want to wrestle each other but maybe don't want to sacrifice their record for the postseason tournaments, they get a chance to really go at it and see, really see who is the better wrestler. And Joe, when you look at the, uh, you know, the state rankings and the FCAC records, do these exhibition matches have any implication on those whatsoever? Um, these don't have any implication on any of the postseason stuff, um, but what it does is it gets a really good look at where you stand. Um, like I said, Samantha Yap is, she's got to be one of the top 10, if not top five, 106 pounders here in Connecticut. And, you know, if Nate can come out of this with a win, that really puts him in a good, strong position and helps him build some confidence and momentum going forwards. So this is an exhibition between Yap and Smith. Yap had a quick. Quick for shot there. Nice defense from Nate, getting his hip down. Looking to control that arm. Another quick shot. Nate's trying to turn his body, kick away. Great takedown here. And Nate pops right back up, finds a leg. Let's see if he could turn this around. If he can hunt for her head, he might get a reversal out of this. It's going to be potentially dangerous there. And Samantha, yeah, her entire body was off the mat on that <laughs> yeah. one. And that's why the ref's going to stop it. We, again, we want to try and make it as safe as we can. It's always going to be a physical sport. Injuries are going to happen. But when we can stop it and keep it safe, we try to. So we'll restart. Nice stand up here. Samantha does a great job finding a leg, keeping control. Oh, now it's Nate's turn to be off the mat. Yeah, just a junior, so you got to assume she'll have one more year next year, or senior year. Or the Black Knights. Oh yeah, and and she's such a great, great addition to their room. I mean, she she's such a strong wrestler, such a technical wrestler that she really helps their younger wrestlers improve and get better, giving them tips and tricks and pointers. So here we're looking for Nate to get behind, ties it up there at two two. Tied at two. And this first period is exactly why this is the match I wanted to see tonight. Two strong wrestlers just trying to figure out who's the better of the two, putting it all on the line. Smith currently on top, up on the bottom. He's locking a cradle up here, so what he's trying to do is he's trying to basically bring Samantha's knee to her head and, and crunch her whole body up to get control over it. She's doing a great job of staying extended, controlling his hand. That prevents him from locking up his grip here. He's fighting it. He's fighting it. Wow. That is the end of the first period. Just a great strong first period here from both wrestlers. I believe we are tied at two apiece. It will be Darianne's choice. Deferring to the third period. And they're going to start neutral. And Joe, in these exhibition matches, do you think that they're going to try new positions out here because there's not really points on the line? They're going to they're going to try new new positions, maybe one that they wouldn't choose, say if this was the FCAC finals. But they're also judging off what they saw from that first period, and they saw she's got a nice quick shot and is able to get to his leg quickly. So they're looking to break this tie and get her two points as fast as they can. Now Nate seems to have adjusted, but just stepped his hips in a little too far. Yeah, picks up the two points. Now she's doing what's called riding legs, and what he wants to do is pop and look to see if he can control her head. What a move there from Yap in control now. Just great control of her hips, great control of her center of balance. What Nate's trying to do here is swim and capture her head, and if he can do that and get her shoulders on the mat, he can get a pin from this defensive position, which is 
a very rare sight here in wrestling. Just like that. Oh, if we could have held it a little longer. It's kind of impressive when you watch Yap and just her stellar grip she has to Smith, just to hold on with everything she's got. Just, I mean, amazing strength that she has in, in her legs, in her arms, in her hands. A great job here by Nate. Gets his reversal, ties it back up at four. Now he's got a nice arm bar sunk in there. He's trying to run around her head again. One big step is all he needs. One big step is all he needs. Now he's got a good position here. He wants to reverse his grip and he wants to try and scoop. There it is. If he can get his elbow behind her head, he can prevent her from bridging. And that's what we're looking for. Great job by Nate. Smith on top, Yap trying to push him off. I'm trying not to jump up and down and yell at this one because this is an exciting match. This really is a great match. So Nate gets the three back points there. That puts him up by three. And he gets choice from deferral. So we're gonna... Wow, neutral again, again. Rare sight to see wrestlers choose neutral in the third period. Oh, now Nate goes on the offense. He sees he's got his opponent tired. Gets right in on his shot with a great trip. Two points for Smith. Now he wants to get underneath her arm. He's spending too much time on the outside. Locks up a power half. And then again, goes right from one move to the next. Chains his moves together from the power half. Sees it's not working, goes to the cradle. Sees that not working and switches down to wrist control. Again, he's trying to roll that wrist in. Another nice good half. Samantha's doing a great job of keeping her weight centered. He's just broken the plane. If he can get her arm past 90 degrees, he can start scoring some back points just like that. Now he wants to get his hip down and he wants to get his head looking up at the lights. Nice. Pin there. And Smith will pin Yap. What a battle between these two wrestlers. And you know, you love to see that in an exhibition match, a junior captain and a sophomore varsity wrestler both say, you know what? Doesn't matter what my record is. Doesn't matter about my ego. I want to go out there and wrestle the best competition that's available. And a uh, great match there. I believe we got one more exhibition on hand. Axel coming back out for another match. Now I'm not certain who this is for Stanford. Thinking it might be Anais Rivera. Great, great sprawl. Nice stand up there, good fight on the hands by Axel. Man just to score his escape. Now he's down two to one. He's got to look to be aggressive, but can't be overly aggressive. Now he knows she's got a good defense. There we go. Wants to climb up the hips, get his way to her head. There we go. Good takedown is gonna put him up three to two. And this is a ruse against what we think is Rivera for Stanford in the second exhibition. And it's hard to tell with exhibition matches because they're not scheduled ahead of time. That's kind of a spur of the moment decision by the coaches. Once again, if you are just joining us, Darian did win the match. So they are just doing some exhibitions now. Essential the afternoon. Final score of it was 51 to 27 in favor of the Blue Wave. A great win for us, really helps build the confidence of the program. Had a couple good matches in there, you know, a little excitement. And this is a Blue Wave team that will travel up to Granby Memorial this weekend to take on uh, eight schools in a big meet yes. up there. Those are, uh, those are long days, you know, when, whenever you're wrestling eight, nine matches in a day, you're going you're gonna to feel that the next day. You know, it's a good thing they happen on Saturdays. 
You look at the rest of their schedule. They still got to meet with Fairfield Ludlow, a uh, big meet at Norwalk, and they play New Fairfield and one over at Fairfield Ward. Yes, finish the season off at Fairfield Ward. Uh, it's always a, a little bit of a rivalry for me. I coach freshman football and the assistant coach up at Fairfield Ward is the defensive line coach for our varsity football team. So. A oh, little dispute on who chose what. And it looks like there's some dispute on it. Looks like it was unclear who chose what position. So that is sometimes the Sometimes the issue with choosing positions, how it's supposed to work is the wrestler is supposed to turn and look at his coach, and the coach gives him the position to choose, whether he's deferring, top, bottom, or neutral. Looks like there, Coach Lewis told Axel to defer, and instead he chose neutral. Now we'll see if that was a good or a bad decision on Axel's part. I guess the positive of that is that it is an exhibition here because it could have gotten a lot more heated if this was an actual match and there were oh. points on the line. Oh, yes. If this was the varsity, you would see both coaches up at the table yelling and arguing. Once again, at this point, you're just getting experience for your wrestlers. It was a great sit out by Axel, but she had a great counter to his takedown. Wow, nice shot there. Now what she wants to do is let go of this. At this point, there it is, and get right to her belly, but he caught her with the half. He's on top, and that will be the pin for Great. Axel Roos. Great pin there, nice fight. Gets him two wins on the day. You know, only one is his varsity win, but an exhibition win is a win nonetheless. And I believe that's gonna do it I believe this match. that is. They're going to shake hands and get right back to work tomorrow. Once again, the final score, Darianne wins this match 51-27 to over the Stanford Black Knights, moving them to 5-6 and six on the season. Stanford will drop to 0-6. Oh Both teams still have a good amount of matches left on the season, so about halfway through the season. And Joe, what were your kind of final takeaways here from this one? Um, like you said, I, I thought it was a great match. Um, there were a couple really good matches in there. You know, Stanford, is a, they're a strong program. They're, they're a program that even if the numbers are down, they're not afraid to come after you. They're not afraid to step on the mat and fight, as we saw when Samantha came back out for an exhibition match. Um, on Darianne's side, I saw a lot of good things. We were pushing the tempo, working for our takedowns, controlling from top, and quick on the bottom. Um, these are all good signs. It's all what we want from our kids, especially with three, four weeks left in the season where we're coming right up on that postseason. And, that's when you really want to hit your stride and be at your best wrestling. And from what I saw tonight, Darian did a really, really good job fighting a really tough Stanford team. Um, Stanford's record in no way indicates the skill level that is on their team. You know, like we saw in a couple of those matches, sometimes things change in the blink of an eye and they just don't go your way. So a big win for the Blue Wave and that's going to do it for our broadcast. I'm going to give one final shout out to our DAF Media Production crew, all student volunteers doing a great job bringing you all the sights and sounds in this one. Connor Fagan, David Popson, Will Foresta, Tim He, our DAF Media Advisor, Damian Andrew, and Joe, thank you for coming on the broadcast. Our expert in oh, wrestling yeah, here. Yeah, that's me. Informing the viewers of the sport and, you know, just a great event we have. So for our entire production crew, Joe Testa, saying so long from Darien High School. I've been Braden Shank, and we thank you for watching the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. We'll see you next time.